Well, Lenny, tell me, how's that book reading coming along? Fine, I guess. Good. Keep it up. <coughs> you do enough of it, maybe you can learn to rob like a gentleman. been getting on. Stole a necklace last week from a lady's house in the mansion district. I don't like saying to me. Scares me. Like a city built on built on I don't know what. Built Good morning, on. Uncle Arthur. My fault, Jack. You all right? You settling back in? I like it here. Lots of places to explore. Well, don't explore too far. Okay, well, let's talk more later. Okay.
There's ghosts in the swamp. Ghosts. I saw them. There's ghosts in your head, Reverend. Ghosts. Ghosts. I saw ghosts. A young woman. You lost your mind. You poor bastard. Thank you for your help with Miss Jackson. Uh, don't mention it, Miss Grimshaw. You're a fine man, Mr. Morgan. Sometimes, at least. Thank you. I think. Sure, old man. Ah, enough of that old man nonsense. I'm in the prime of my life. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> How you getting now? Bored. You see that swamp, Arthur? That's God's own pantry. What are we eating? Venison? Come on, let's go gather some crawfish. See what else we can get. Crawfish? Yeah, crawfish. Finest eating there is. It's not just crawfish. No, there's monsters out there. That'll eat a feller for fun. Oh, Arthur, I thought you were a man. No, sir. Huh. When it comes to prehistoric monsters, I am very much a coward. <laughs> Head for those trees across from us, and we'll take a look. On the starboard side. The what? My left, your right. This is a boat, Arthur. Okay. Whatever you say. Okay, go slow so I can... My eyes aren't what they used to be. No, no, ground is too high here. Keep following the shoreline. What exactly are we looking for? We're looking for low ground and a lot of muck. Sit over there. Uh, here? Yeah, yeah, come on. There's more than crawfish in these waters. Stop your whining, please. It's beneath you. This is the place. Now tell me, Arthur, have you ever birthed a cow? No. Right, I mean, it's nothing like that, but it's equally as gruesome if you're squeamish. You're really selling this, aren't you? Now, do you see this hole? Yep. Well, it's sort of like a natural trap. Just want to stick your hand in. Watch. And there! <laughs> there, you see? Good. Seems easy enough. Uh-huh. Let's go find another hole. So, how long were you in the Navy? Oh, years. Well, it must have been a year, at least. Or close to that. That's quite a range. All water under the bridge now. No pun intended. Oh, look there. Another crayfish hole. You see it? You try this time, Arthur. And remember to reach down deep and get right in there. They like to dig in, the little blighters. Best not to think about it too much. Oh, I got some. Nicely done. Why don't you see if there's any more down there? You know the drill now. There we go. What did I tell you? <laughs> okay, come on. Let's try another hole. Won't be much of a gumbo if we don't find some more. Get down. Get 
it out. Talking of other creatures, there. Those gators? Yeah. Three. And they're female. Must be guarding nests. So... Gator eggs. Really valuable. Even better eating. I love cooking with them. Okay. Tell you what. I'm gonna sneak over to the other side of them. Draw their attention. And then run like hell. Now, assuming I don't get eaten, you go plunder the nests. That's your plan? You're madder than I thought. Shh. I've done it before in Sumatra. It's easy. I've heard that line before. Oh, ye of little faith. Wait here, Mr. Morgan. Take us back to the dock. Excellent. That's what I call teamwork. I don't think I've ever seen you move that fast. People pay a lot of money for those eggs. I'm told there's a collector in San Denis who gives top dollar for them. For millinery, of all things. Yeah, because who doesn't want a hat with an egg on it? That was fun. Uh, I must get out more. Is that your... Is it? <sighs> oh, what? Thank you. Here, have some crawfish. And give you some of those eggs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe you could hatch that. Get yourself a new friend. There's a thought. A new reptilian best buddy. To replace Mike, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't thinking much. Drunken idiot, that's what you think. I got bigger problems to worry about. Have you, Arthur? Have you? That's nice. Good for you. Good for you. 
But Karen, don't do this to yourself, please. You got a choice. Sure. I got a choice. That's nice. What do you want? Well, don't be like that. This is a good one. Yeah, it always is with you. Until we start getting shot at. Well, have you ever been shot at by a cow? Whose cows? This drunken rancher up at Hill Haven Ranch. He's such a flop that we could take a whole marching band up there and steal, and he still wouldn't wake up. And he's a son of a bitch. He said unkind things about me. Mm, he ain't all bad then. I, I owe you after last time. This could be my make good. I don't know. I need you. You know those two bastards that buy stolen livestock. Sure, I know them. I don't like them. <clears throat> I'll give you 60% of the take. How many cows? I don't know, small herd, I guess. 20, maybe? 20, huh? Come on. So where's this ranch? It's right in the middle of Scarlet Meadows, just past the road's turnoff. Get gone! So how'd you find out about this place? I've been hanging around the saloon in Rhodes a bit. Rhodes? Yeah, the, the barkeep there gossips like a fishwife. And a couple of times he's mentioned how this rancher's a fall down drunk these days. Sounds like he don't know his ass from his armpit half the time. <laughs> you sure you ought to be hanging around Rhodes after everything that happened? What do you mean? I mean, that it ain't gonna do your health no good if they find out you ride with us. Nah, it's fine. I was never there at the same time as you boys. And they'd never reckon on a distinguished old feller like me running with a bunch of reprobates. Well, just be careful. Yep. How old are you, anyway? Well, let's just say I was born sometime between the fall of 49 and the fall of Rome. <laughs> and my second wife always used to describe me as ageless, though she did leave me for a younger man. Hmm. Well, maybe we should cut you open and count the rings of whiskey. Now, I'm ready for my retirement, though. <laughs> Let me tell you. You've been pretty much retired from the moment I met you. Now, I mean the tropics, you know, the real deal. What Dutch is talking about. That's why I jumped on this opportunity. The sooner we get enough money to leave, the better. Dancing girls with flowers in their hair, warm sand, cold beer. <laughs> That's how I'm going to see out my days. Well, We're gonna cut up I'll this believe way. it when I see it. Let's get up there on foot from here. Don't want the horses clopping around outside the window. Come on, let's take a closer look. Look over there. The hell? Who are these clowns? I don't know. This is the first time I ever seen anyone else here. Let's sneak up closer. What? Where the hell are you going? I think I got a plan. Hurry up. I'm doing the best I can. So shut up. Hurry up. And be quiet. You said he was a drunkard. You said that we could play the fiddle and we wouldn't wake him. I was talking in a metaphor. Now hurry up. Oh, what's a metaphor? You're a jackass. That's a metaphor. You're a son of a bitch. Well, that ain't one. Now, now, now get back to looking out. And shut up. So, what now? I thought you had a plan. 
I ain't so sure now. Christ, I'll take care of him. You hear that? It ain't nothing. Oh, I heard something. Hurry up. How can I hear anything with all your speaking? You are gonna wake him up. Oh, oh. I'm doing the best I can. Okay, this here is a rusty padlock. Hurry up. <sighs> you do it. You think you could do it faster? Shut up. Shut up and get to it. You are gonna wake up old Squeers. <sighs> He's a drunkard. He's never gonna wake up. Give me a minute. I think I got it. Yes, I got it. There. All good. We'll get the gate open. Okay, okay. <laughs> to the house to keep him from running off on us. What the, what the hell? I'm being robbed! Damn you goddamn robbers! Shit! <laughs> he knocked himself out! <laughs>
Well, hey there. What you got? Cattle. Well, I can see that. Whose cattle? Yours now, if the price is right. Well, I can give you uh, hmm. 50 bucks. Okay. 50 bucks each times uh, 20 cattle. No, no, 50 total. <laughs> this is old Squeer's cattle. He knows me. I can't do better than that. I'll have to move them right away. We'll take 200, friend. But I got costs. Mm. 150. 75 and not a dollar more. 100. And I don't shoot you. <laughs> so menacing. Clyde, pay your friend here. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> Bye now. Be careful out there. This is nasty country. There. Don't forget to put some in the pot. Oh, of course. <laughs> like I told you, easy. Sure, I guess. I'm headed home. You coming? Nah, I'll see you later. Thanks for the help with this, Arthur. Okay, girl.
Out of the damn way! How you doing, Mrs. Adler? How are you? Been quite a journey since I, well, since I joined you fellas. Yes. And now you and Dutch have joined high society. My lord above. Yeah, it seems so. I think my days in polite society are over. Well, I just saw Bill Williamson at a party at the San Denise's mayor's house. <laughs> if he can do it, anyone can. You get any leads? Yeah, I think so. You know so, Arthur Morgan. Come on, we need to talk. Mrs. Adler, will you excuse us? When are you gonna let me come robbing with you, Dutch? My lord, a few more like her, we could take over the whole world. Yeah. A few more like her, there wouldn't be much of a world left. Yes, perhaps. Now, the trolley bus station. I went down there, I took a look at it. I think we can hit it. I ain't never robbed in a city before. Yeah, well, you leave the planning to me. You'll ride with me. Always. Is it just you and me? No, we'll need one more, I reckon. I say Lenny. Not Micah. Well, that depends if you want a massacre or a payday. No, I wish that there was something I could do to make the two of you get along better. Well, that's easy. Make them change. 
Very funny. What is that? What the hell have they done to me? Look, there, the tree line. Everybody take cover! <laughs> the Driscoll boys are coming! Windows covered quickly. John, you take the windows over there. Charles, you take the side doors there. Arthur, you take the windows in the back. Go! Is everyone accounted for? I think. Hey! I said, is everyone accounted for? Ah! I don't know! I think! You call her now, you know. That's Mrs. Adler. She's still out there. Cover me. Okay. Who's this lady here? Dutch always had a fondness for women. Sadie, Sadie, I'm coming.
We okay? I think so. Except for Karen here. Uh, poor kid. Mr. Swanson, could you take this boy and bury him someplace near, but not too near? Of course. Charles, help me with the body. We need to get this place cleaned up. Mr. Pearson, Miss Grimshaw. Already taking care of it. Come on now, work. Home O'Driscoll. That man can really hate. So can I, Arthur. So can I. We need to get moving. Away from here. So we should start looking for another camp. You ain't thinking big enough, Arthur. You ain't seeing the vastness of our problems and our opportunities. I'm not sure I get you. You will, son. You will. Meet me near the trolley station. We got work. Shall we? Yep. <clears throat> he saved my life, and I could not save his. Mrs. Adler fought braver than any of us. She is driven by powerful forces I scarcely understand. That's what love has done to her, I guess. In a swamp. Yeah, it's like hell on earth. It beats freezing to death. In the south, in a swamp. This is not for me. Nor me. Or where am I? The sun's not.
Hello, Javier. Hello. You okay, boy? how you get a good point. Come on, my turn now, please. Oh, no. We don't need you getting in no more trouble. <laughs> you all right, Jack? I'm just fine. Why? No reason. <laughs> you got some guts, kid. That's for sure. <laughs>
Arthur, I can't believe those pigs did that to him. You can. He was such a gentle soul. Yeah, he saved my life one time. I'll miss him. You make the bastards pay, Arthur. If we get the chance, we surely shall. It's a nice place you brought us to, my brother. Yes. Lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, makes me miss freezing to death in the mountains. <laughs> yeah. Miss Grimshaw. Well, hello, Javier. How's it going? Get down, but I'll be all right. Come here, Arthur. How are you doing? What do you want? Yeah. Always full of sunshine, ain't you? Old Misery Guts Morgan. What do you want, Micah? Hmm. Well, I... I want a friend, Arthur. I want hope. I want tomorrow to mean more than today. I want this whole damn shit show to have some kind of meaning I haven't understood. <laughs> but I ain't holding my breath. Yeah, I wouldn't. So, instead of that, how about you and me go and redistribute some property? Redistribute? Yep. From the Bowles Overland Stagecoach Company into our pockets. And you'll fight this time? I always fight! No, you always talk. But with coaches, guns are more significant than words. Oh, I'm fine with both, friend. Yeah. Come on, then. <laughs> you think we need an extra gun? Probably a good idea. Bill, come on. What are we doing? Coach, stick up. Well, excellent. I'm in. Micah and Bill, this is a death sentence. There's a good spot where we can hit it as it comes over the river into the swamps north of here. You got an actual plan this time? I got three sticks of dynamite, I got two pistols, I got you and Bill. That count as a plan? Not really. Well, let's go. <laughs> I'm joking. So, who told you about this? Please tell me it wasn't an O'Driscoll this time. Nope, a man on the inside at Bowles Overland. You can keep your funny little station friend in Rhodes. I go right to the source. Why did he tip you off? Charm, Bill. Not something you can learn, I regret to inform you. Very true. You're your proof of that. Amusing. Charm. And a little money. Right. Which I recovered the next day when he met with a tragic boating accident. See, I don't like leaving trails, unlike the rest of you. What do you mean by that? We keep leading trouble right to us. We're carrying too much dead weight. We need to be leaner so we can move faster, quieter. I prefer a tight crew. Just five or six strong gunmen. Well, nobody's stopping you. There's a whole world out there. Go find the strong men you want and leave. Hey, I like you boys. And with the price on our heads, we are wedded in this chaos, for better or for worse at this point. It would be a coward's move to bail on Dutch now. Not like John did. Heard about him disappearing on you fellers. For a year, wasn't it? Something like that. I don't trust him. I've been talking to Dutch. Feels to me like he's turned, challenging every move Dutch makes. I know you have your doubts about him, too, Morgan. I got no doubts about John. I've known him for 15 years. Well, if we really are gonna escape somewhere like me and Dutch have been talking about, we're gonna need to cut some loose. Let's cut across here. It'll be quicker. 
what Dutch says, the coffers are looking pretty good again. He could almost leave now if we chop half the dead wood. We ain't doing that. I mean, why the hell do we need a gaggle of girls who won't even fuck you if you put a gun to their head? I'm sure you've tried. Is it too much to ask, considering they get a piece of every damn dollar I bring in? Everyone does their share. I don't see you lifting a finger out, camp. Huh. Swanson does his share. Molly, come on. No, uh, that's different. See, uh, uh, this is what I mean. I've always liked Abigail, though. That's my kind of girl. Sully, but strong. Well, I don't get the sense the feeling is mutual. <laughs> you just don't understand women, Morgan. Okay? Here we are. Oh. I'll get the explosive planet. The coach should be coming through any minute now. in the road over here so we can blow it as it comes over the bridge got some good cover over here you hide behind this tree to my left morgan williamson you take the other side try to stay out of sight we don't want to spook them Gonna shoot the charges, Morgan? About time you did something. How much we get, cowpoke? Enough. Here. Thank you kindly. Thank you. Maybe I had you wrong, Arthur. Maybe you can win as well as fight. Or maybe you was lucky. Uh, we'll see, I guess, how lucky any of us is. Exactly. All right. Better get out of here. Split up, I reckon.
Talk to Creepy bastards!
One moment, please. This is extremely delicate. Hey. There. Oh, wonderful. May I help you? Well, uh, I don't know. I met you, remember? At that party? Oh, yes. You saved my life. Oh, I am eternally yours, Algernon Wasp, purveyor of the exotic and the exquisite Enchanté. Uh, Tacitus Kilgore. How can I help you? May I interest you in a uh, hat, perhaps? How about a nymph? I import them from Brussels. The idiots in this town all want Italian nymphs, but the Italians make the coarsest of marble. I mean, quite frankly, the Baroque is an abomination. Belgium. Now that is a land for the connoisseur. Oh, yes. Yeah, as I always say. But, you know, I'm not really a nymph kind of man. No, oh, of course, too ephemeral. You want something uh, more tangible, more gothic. I also make corsets. Would you like a corset? I always wear one. Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah, I ride a lot of horses. Um, the whalebone might stick in. Mm, well, a cup of tea. Uh, sure. And what is it you do, Mr. Kilgore? Are you a gentleman of leisure? An aesthete? <gasps> an artist. Uh, I suppose I'm <clears throat> kind of an adventurer. Ha! Huh. Yes, of course you are. Here, be careful with the china. Sir, it is French. Not Belgian? No, no, no. no. They are Philistines in that area not to be trusted. Youth, eternally preserved in marble, is more their specialty. I fear China will always elude them. Now, why are you here exactly? I don't know. You're an adventurer, a wanderer, a lost soul cast out from heaven? <sighs> sure. Well, I do pay exceptionally well for certain objects needed for my art. Mm, you do? I do. Exceptionally well. Well, what do you need? Let's see. Right now, I have a couple of commissions. I need at least 15 egret plumes. Good ones, obviously. I also need 15 assorted orchids. Here's a list. Okay. I will see what I can do. Thanks for the tea. Thank you, Tacitus. It'll be very worth your while. Come on, girl. Homes <laughs> for the blind.
Good morning. Chateaunay, the painter! <laughs> okay. What are you dressed up like that for? Oh, I am a wanted man, persecuted for my art! As bad as it is, <laughs> I don't think that the art is the problem. In Paris, they say leave, go far away! We will never understand you here! I say, I go to Saint Denis! They say that is not far enough! <laughs> it seems to me that they were right. But it doesn't matter. Now, I go to South Pacific. They always tell me the light there is perfect for my work. Well, so long as they weren't telling you that just to get you on the other side of the world. Perhaps. It doesn't matter. Help me get to the next ship. They are watching the port, and I need a chaperone. <sighs> okay, come on. Oh. I'll tell you what I won't miss. Civilization! So repressive! So stifling! I can hardly breathe in this city! Yeah, I kinda know what you mean. Why I thought I would find my way in a country founded by Puritans, I'll never know! I know those men! I shot on that bar! Quick, behind here! Remind me to avoid that place. Back, back. See money lenders. We go another way. We go through here. What's this? Quickly! <gasps> I thought I knew him. Please do not do that again. <sighs> now get moving, come on. Good morning to you. So, wait. You ain't so none of your work. There is always a heavy demand for fresh mediocrity, but no kinds of failures. Not so much. The new kinds of dig. The holy affair. We go fair. You went over your head in the big town. Anywhere you want, mon ami. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> at bar shitting money borrowing wife stealing you sure got a way of ingratiating yourself with people if the purpose of life was to be liked it would be very boring indeed i've developed the feeling the purpose ain't to be hated hate love they are the same i provoke i challenge i amuse do i not with my impropriety a mediocre life is meaningless a bold life filled with art and truth dirty truth that is something that matters now, uh... look at you pretty little thing Woo! i know boys come on The sailors know who they're bunking with. 
We have many weeks together. We will get to know each other well. well good luck to all of you. Relax. Hey, up here. She is my ship. <sighs> we Jeez. made it! Let's go. Oh, no, 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 no. I got it. He's out here. Uh, more friends? I have a lot of fans around here. Leaving soon. Ah, merci, merci. All aboard for the South Pacific. Adieu. Merci, mon ami. So long. If they don't like you in the islands, keep on going to the South Pole. Ah, yes. I hear there the light is really fantastic. Ah, au revoir.
Wall Street brought here to the South to help those wise enough to help themselves. Let me help you help yourselves. Hello, mister. Hello, friend. Do you want to be rich? I already got the book. Oh. Well, that's terrific. How are you getting along? Well, I'm clearly not rich. Come on, buddy. You gotta work harder. Read the equations. Follow the 38 steps to wealth. Be a man. I think I'd like my money back. We'd all like our money back, buddy. Caveat emptor, as my old man used to say. Well, my old man used to say different things. Now give me my money. Get out of here. You get out of here. Piss off.
alms for the blind. Oh, good day to you. Do you have anything you can spare for a blind man? Uh, please, there's someone here. Oh, <laughs> thank you, sir. Uh, truly, thank you. It means a lot to me. Good evening, mister. Good evening to you. Cowboy. Well, I ain't too sure. <laughs> well, that's a feeling I imagine you're just too familiar with, hmm, darling. Now, shoo, please. I'm waiting for someone interesting to turn up. I keep telling Dr. Holoff that the cow, mister. Excuse me. Hello, lover. Oh, what do you have? What does a dried up old hag have to do to get drunk around here? Evening. Gentlemen, you're embarrassing yourselves. You're not even good you know drunks. What? I think our dear Randall's been dipping his dick in the billiards. Hey, good looking. <coughs> As my nana used to say, nothing new under the sun. Even Sergeant. Bonjour. Morning to you. What have we here? You look like you need to let off some steam. 
Not today. Sure. I'm just trying to help. Careful, lady. Ne vous excusez pas, surtout. Here we go. Pardon me. Bien le bonjour, monsieur. Excuse me. Saludos. Well, hey. You all right, girl?
journée, n'est-ce pas See you there. Give me a minute, please. If you need Thank you. Anything else? Leave me alone! I know you. Mr. I believe we've met. We have. At that ghastly party. Oh, Evelyn Miller. Unfortunately so, Mr. Arthur Morgan, at least sometimes. Uh, can I say something rude? Sure. The mayor thinks you robbed him. Well, I, uh, to be clear, he, he wasn't very upset about it. He rather liked you. Okay. Do you, uh... I mean to say, uh, can you steal things? Is there a reason you're asking me to incriminate myself, Mr. Miller? Well, I'm sorry. Have you met? Uh, this is Rain's Fall, a great chief, and his son, Eagle Flies. Gentlemen, yeah, we saw you in the wagon train crossing the river at Cumberland Falls. And at the party, you were upstairs. <laughs> you have great powers of observation. Yes, my people, if we are even a people anymore. We've fought hard. We've made peace treaties, and those treaties were broken, and we've been moved and punished and punished and moved. I'm sure. And now I am told we are to be moved again. Clearly contravening the peace treaty signed three years ago. This will lead to war. No, my son, it will not. We cannot fight another war. They have got stronger and we have become far weaker, Mr. Morgan. Well, it's a bad business. It's to do with oil. I know it is, but I need the proof. I believe there were some prospectors who were on their land a few months ago who have filed reports with Leviticus Cornwall and the state government claiming huge reserves of oil under their land. So, you want me to try and steal it? Obviously, they can't. <laughs> and even more obviously, I would be useless. <clears throat> Listen, I realize that it is a ridiculous request, now, but we're very desperate. Now, I'm not a do-gooder, Mr. Miller. 
Gentlemen, I'm very sorry for your predicament, but I'm a working man. I got problems of my own. We will pay you very handsomely, Mr. Morgan. How much? I told you, they're all mercenaries. <laughs> <laughs> There's a price on my head in two states, my friend. The government doesn't like me any more than it does you. Like you, I've been running for as long as I can remember. And like you, my time here is nigh undone. We understand, and we will pay. Thank you. You meet my son in a couple of days near Citadel Rock, just west of the oil fields. Okay. We are very grateful for your help. Gentlemen, an appointment with the Senator. We should head over there. It's a waste of our time. And his. No. We must try everything. Come along. Hello. Mr. Miller, the counselor wants to apologize. He can see you now. We've been waiting I don't know how long. Or next month, if you'd like to reschedule. Come. Perhaps the senator won't mind waiting. Yeah. 